Okay, I'm gonna give this experiment one more try just because to me this beaker was very valuable and I'd hate to waste it so quickly. So I went ahead and JB welded it back together. So this thing is not gonna last long, but it will give us an opportunity to observe some of the flow characteristics of this conical frustum shape. The frustum shape on the cyclone seems to be doing pretty good. A lot of the particles are kept down below due to the wedge action, which I kind of like. And I also observe another um, neat behavior. When you tilt this beaker, the particles circulate. So I'm going to be doing a demonstration of that. And this here is the second attempt at a gas sample combustor or a flare, if you want to call it a flare. I'm really just trying to see if this is getting a burnable amount of CO2. But the idea behind this concept is to knock all the ash off of the active particles to enable maximum active surface area throughout the reaction because a lot of gasifiers will drop off in performance after running for a little bit because of the ash formation on the exterior of the hot carbon particle. So this is intended to knock all those ashes off. So hopefully we get a little blue flame or even a yellow one out of this. There's probably a lot of moisture in this carbon. So we probably will see a yellow flame. And another reason we're probably gonna see a yellow flame is because unfortunately some JB Weld has contaminated the interior of this beaker. So the test in itself is botched for that reason alone. We're obviously probably gonna get a flammable gas once that stuff starts to gas out. But nonetheless, I wanna just show real quick the, uh, the circulation characteristic of tilting this cyclone. Just kind of a look at the circulation characteristic I was telling you about. See how the particles are all in continual movement? When you set it flat, they don't do that. The uh, vortex kind of stops that from happening. And we're going to fire this thing up and watch it operate on the combustion. to try and ignite this so I'm not ready it's so windy in here this is not gonna work damn it okay Putting it out. 
Yeah, I think I've messed it up. I better let it run real slow for a while so it can get more lit. Get a nice pile burning. It looks like getting a lot of it lit at once is the biggest problem. See this? What's going on in there? As soon as it gets lit pretty good, I will go ahead and uh, sorry, not paying attention to the camera there. circulation here that's on some serious circulation still no flammable gas we're going back to air Shit. I can't believe it's still running Getting a little bit of a flammable gas, probably from the JV well. gas must have got a little hot. <laughs> got another big old crack up the beaker there. Nonetheless, I think the beaker did pretty good this time. I think letting it warm up slowly, Russ kind of made the comment about heat shock. So uh, slowing it down a little bit and taking that in consideration definitely made that beaker last a lot longer. The JB Weld completely separated. And uh, I got a measly little bit of ignition inside of here. Nothing that would stay lit, it didn't seem. So in conclusion, this process does not generate any usable fuel stream of any kind. It's burning it all inside of there, I'm guessing. I was hoping the turbulence would extinguish the valuable fuel stock. But uh, that did not happen. I'm about to get shot with a hot rubber band here. I figured I'd disarm that now. So 
The blower itself is screaming hot. Didn't have time to get any temperature. It's hard telling how hot this was initially. She heated up pretty good. Wasn't running that long. It stinks too. Motor itself took a little bit of pounding. This thing is still screaming hot. Probably still a good carbon fire going in there. Probably ought to dump that out. There you have it. Total failure, but maybe there was something to be learned out of that. I just don't know what. I would not be pursuing this concept any further. If it was worth it, we would have got some kind of fire shooting out of the top of it. And we did not. It's also a lose for JB Weld. Then again, they only said it'd go to 500 degrees. So, there you have it. The circulation idea didn't work out too good. I didn't really have time to do much circulation, as you've seen. I'll have to go back to the footage. But um, basically, when I had this valve closed, we're doing almost all circulation to where it's recycling the gases and reacting the carbon dioxide with the hot carbon to initiate the Bowdert reaction. And it didn't work in this configuration so our next move is this tall thing right here we're gonna run a long narrow reaction column rather than a big tank with a little ball we're gonna try running something about four foot long with about two foot of uncombusting fuel sitting on top of it and that will cause higher velocities that the carbon monoxide will not be able to burn under. Carbon monoxide and hydrogen mixtures are, are kind of a lazy flame. And that's one way of extinguishing pre-combustion gases. Now, one piece of valuable information that you could say we achieved in this experiment is a process that scrapes away residue from the exterior wall. If you were to be using this thing as some kind of heating device with heating coils wrapped around it or something, this would be very beneficial. Because you can see up here at the top where we don't have the particle erosion of buildup. That would insulate the exterior wall. But down here, we're almost as clean as, as it was when the experiment started, which would transfer heat way better. So that is one cool aspect of this. It does knock away ash. You can see right up top there, it's just in pretty bad shape. Right there is a big old drift mark. So yeah, it, you know, this wasn't running for very long at all. You imagine running this thing for 20 hours, that buildup could end up being a quarter inch thick. So, having that stuff swirling around there definitely did uh, create a very awesome heat exchange interface. And I think this beaker is done. I may save the bottom piece for an observation lens on something later on, but other than that, this thing is toasted. <laughs> I broke my vacuum nozzle, removing the discharge tube so there you have it that's one thing we got out of this experiment